right, let's get started making this journal. I'm using the seven by nine create an album cover and I'm gonna be using the nature study six by eight ledger papers inside and we'll put a create an album binder mechanism inside this. I already took the black one out. They come with um, a black and a white. And I'm gonna cover the cover of the album with this fabric tape, the essentials that came out with the nature study collection. And then to punch the papers, I'm gonna use the 49 market punch that is designed to work with the binder mechanism but it's also a standard punch size so it works with a lot of other binder mechanisms as well so let's get started i'm going to take the cover out of its plastic sleeve and just get started doing easier said than done huh okay here we go it out and you see it's already all made and scored and it's sturdy that's why I really want to use this as a basis for creating this custom ledger journal okay so I've got my plain cover I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna use this fabric tape So there's all different kinds. Oh yeah. Okay. So here I'm gonna use the wide tape. And do I wanna go vertical or horizontal? I think I'm gonna go horizontal. So what I'm gonna do is just cover the front. All right, so I've got the cover all done. And when I flip it over, you can see I've got all this hanging off the edges. And I'm thinking I wanna also cover the inside with maybe like some paper. So what I'm gonna do is trim this down so that the tape comes over the edges and kind of protects the ends. So I'm gonna just, um, actually I'm gonna take it off camera here for a minute and uh, trim it down with my X-Acto. All right, I've got it all trimmed. I'm actually gonna add some glue to the edges just to make sure that this stays really well. I mean, the fabric is repositional fabric tape, which does stick after some time but because I'm making this album cover and I want to be sure it doesn't come apart on me I'm gonna just be proactive and add some glue right now and that, you know I didn't add a ton of glue but 
just enough. We'll add a little bit more in here. Like I said, to just give me that added security. And I use um, the 3M Tacky Glue, but you can use any glue. It's just what I have on hand, and, and it works for me. There's some other ones I want to try. I like. I really like the way that needle tip looks on some of the glues people use, but I haven't gotten that one yet. All right, Ooh, so those sides are done. I'm gonna do this side. And across the bottom a little bit here. And I, as you can see, I did like a, what is that, 45 degree angle on the corners so that the corners would seam nicely. Just like when you're doing wrapping, you do a 45 degree angle like that. I'm brushing off all this glue all over my hands, but that's okay. Wash this right off. together nice and let's go in and add a little bit more glue here and then I'm gonna have to figure out what I want to do okay so I've got my cover all glued here right beautiful and then I cut down paper to glue to the inside of the cover um, so these are eight and three quarters by seven and a quarter inches. So they'll just kind of sit, you know, inside the area. So I'm just gonna glue these. With a healthy amount of glue, and make sure everything sticks. <clears throat> and these are from the Vintage Artistry, oops. Nature Study Solids. And just covers the edges just a little bit. Okay. Rub this down. And then I'll do the back cover. Just I always want to make sure I have plenty of glue. Nothing worse than something popping up after you finish the project and it's all dry because you didn't put enough glue on it. Right. Again, just kind of positioning it. I just want to keep it out of the crease lines and hopefully I did that with the front. I'll test it here in a minute. Yeah, that works good. You can see we're all good here. But what I'm going to do now is I've got the center part here. And I'm going to use some of the fabric tape to kind of just secure it and finish the inside look here. I'm just going to cut it with my scissors. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Let me see if I can pull up a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So same thing over here. I don't want the tape hanging over the edge this time. Just come on. That and I did not add glue to this. Like I said, the fabric tape is repositionable, um, but it does start to stick pretty good after it's sat there for a while. So I'm hopeful that these will be just fine. Cut this little string off. We'll go with one more tape here in the center. And 
and then I'm going to be ready to put in my binder mechanism. So let me just trim this off. Okay. Now, I don't know what I had done with the um, original binder mechanism. It comes with tapes uh, that you can use to adhere. But if you're going to put a lot of papers in, I do recommend also using glue. And I can't find my tapes. So I'm lucky I found the binder mechanism, honestly. So much stuff, I never know where anything is. Um, so I'm just going to glue this up really good. And let's see, which way did I want this to go? I want it to go like that. I'm gonna position it there. I'm gonna measure, make sure I got it in the center. Whoops. So what, about two and a half inches there. And about two and a half inches there. So that's good. I'm just gonna leave it sit for a little while. As you can see, it's really moving around on me. I'm gonna leave that sit and let it dry. And then I'll come back and start building my album. Okay, now that the binder mechanism has had time to dry, it's all ready to go. See, I've got my album here all set. And it's time to add the papers, just pinch and pull to open. Okay, so I'm ready to add the papers. And I'm going to use the 49 and Market Punch. If you look closely here, you can see there are markings. Um, I've measured and looked, and it looks like the A4 marking will work best for what I'm going to do. Because if you set it here and line up the holes with the binder, you can see I'm going to come in where I want to be. And I'm using a 6 by 8 paper pack, so I'm not going to trim it at all. I'm just going to use it as is. So I'm hoping that works. Well, you know what? We're going to just punch one and we will see. I won't punch more than one until I'm sure that I'm getting the desired look. So, so you can see here, pushing it in, lining it up there, and then, oops. Good grief. Okay. And punch. Okay, let's see how this looks here. Okay, it doesn't go to the edge. It's a little lower than I'd want, but you know what? That's okay. That gives me room to add some lace or do some extra things and um, have tabs sticking out. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. I think that's going to work for me. So, I've got a bunch of other papers here that I'm just going to line up in here. And I'm just going to do one at a time. You know, the paper punch can handle more than one at a time. But sometimes I can't handle more than one at a time. So, I'm just going to take my time with it and punch the papers. The fun thing about making a journal this way is that the pages aren't fixed. They're not permanent and I can change things. I can remove a page if it just doesn't work. I can add more pages. And this is going to give me a lot of room. This is a two inch spine and I can make these thick. I can add lots of junk to them. I'll be able to take the pages out and gesso them if I want and texture them and not get stuff all over everything else. So I'm really excited to get started. Got my own custom little ledger journal. And it was easy as that, right? Well, thanks for joining me and be sure to follow along I'll show some finished pages as I go, and we'll go through step-by-step step of how to make some of the pages too. So 
Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.